Hello everyone. The topic for discussion now is fixed orthodontic appliances. Introduction. As the name itself says, fixed appliances are the appliances which can be directly placed into the oral cavity. It is directly placed on the teeth. It is fixed onto the teeth. It doesn't depend upon patient cooperation. It is fixed onto the teeth by means of either banding or bonding, which I'll, I'll discuss in my further slides. And the tre treatment effects with fixed appliances are also considered to be as faster because it doesn't depend upon patient cooperation. It is completely fixed in the oral cavity. Now, how fixed appliances are placed in the oral cavity, how they are attached onto the teeth surface, I'll discuss in detail. Now, what are the tooth movements which can be possible with these fixed appliances? Fixed appliances can uh, do various types of tooth movements, like it can bring about tipping type of tooth movement, bodily tooth movement, correction of rotations, intrusions, extrusion, uprighting. All these movements are possible with fixed appliances. What are the various components of fixed appliances? The components can be added into two broad categories. It can be active components or passive components. Active components includes arch wires, springs, elastics, separators. Passive components which helps to attach these active components onto the teeth includes bands, brackets, buckle tubes, lingual attachments, lock pins and ligature wire. What are the various methods of fixing these attachments now? First is banding. Banding is a procedure which includes place, uh, utilization of certain thin metal sheets which are usually made up of stainless steel around uh, particularly posterior teeth on the molars. These bands are pinched around the posterior teeth that is particularly molars and then attachments are either soldered or welded on these bands. The bands are cement, first they are, the attachments either buckle tubes or brackets are welded or soldered on these band materials and then the band is finally cemented onto the tooth, uh, tooth surface. Various types of band materials are available. These band materials can be either thicker or wider or they can be thinner or narrower. Particularly molars or posteriors usually require thicker and wider band, material, band materials whereas anteriors, incisors, canines, laterals usually require band materials which are more thinner and narrower. They are available in various dimensions. What are the various indications of banding? The banding is actually indicated in those areas where occlusion forces will be very maximum and where bonding cannot withstand the forces. So particularly on the posteriors where heavy occlusion forces will be acting, we usually prefer to do banding. Banding is also done in certain areas with this frequent breakages of the brackets. For those teeth also we usually do banding procedure. Apart from this, whenever we want attachments to be placed both on the buccal side as well as the lingual side, now it is not possible to do with bonding. So in such circumstances also we usually do banding. Banding is also done whenever we are using extra oral appliances like headgear or other things. So we usually do banding of the posteriors and then we place tubes. Uh, bucket tubes on it and we use headgears or whatever external appliance we want to use. After knowing about indications of banding, let us know what are the various steps in banding. First is the separation of the teeth. Since the band material is a bit thicker, it can't pass through the interproximal ear. So first we have to separate the posterior teeth from each other. This is usually done by taking using various types of separators. Various separators I'll be discussing in my further slides. So the separator must be kept in place for at least 24 hours. It will separate the teeth from each other and then we have to place the band material. Selection of band material. This I have already mentioned that each specific tooth have a specific band material. Like I have already said that posteriors have more thicker and wider band material when compared to anteriors they have more thinner and narrower band material. So depending upon which tooth we are doing banding we have to select the band material. Next is pinching of the band. Now first the band material is band, we, it is usually available in the form of a spool. We have to cut required amount of band material. We have to first weld the ends of the band material. Then we have to place it on the tooth by using a band pinching pan. We have to pinch the band material tightly to the tooth which, which, is, which is of our interest of doing band. After pinching the band material, again we have to remove the band material. We have to weld it. Then excess of uh, material of the band material is cut off and the excess end is again adapted onto the tooth surface. And finally the last welding is done. Once welding is over, the surface of that uh, welding area is finally smoothened. After this, next is fixing the attachment. Whatever attachment we want to place on the band material is usually fixed. It can be bracket, it can be buckle tube or whatever. We have to weld it onto the surface of the band material and finally the band is placed on the tooth surface. Various types of cement are used for cementing of this band. It can be glass anomal cement, zinc polycarbox made cement and finally it is fixed or cementation of the band is done. So steps is first selection, separation of the tooth, selection of band material, pinching of the band, fixing the attachments on the surface of the band and finally cementation of the band. This was all about banding. Now what is bonding? 
Bonding is a procedure in which attachments are directly placed onto the surface of a tool by using suitable adhesive resin material. <clears throat> there, there are certain advantages of bonding when compared to banding. First, banding usually looks a bit ugly. Bonding is aesthetically more superior when compared to banding. Also, banding is more time consuming procedure, but bonding is less time consuming procedure. It is actually advantageous both for the operator because the operator doesn't get tired. <clears throat> he can do it fa at, at, um, as fast as possible bonding procedure and also it is even good for the patient also because chair side time is also reduced. Apart from this, the bonding can be done in partially erected tooth also. Bonding cannot, banding cannot be done in partially erected teeth. The teeth must be fully erected for doing band. But bonding can be done in partially erected teeth also. It can be done either in primary dentition, it can be also done in permanent dentition also. But there are certain disadvantages of bonding. One disadvantage is bonding material. Bonding procedure requires etching of the enamel of the tooth. So when, when, when etching of the tooth surface is done, it usually causes demineralization of the enamel. Since demineralization occurs, more chances for the occurrence of caries. This is the one disadvantage. And one more disadvantage is whatever may be the advantages of bonding, but the bond is usually a bit weaker when compared to the banding. What are the various steps in bonding? First, the tooth on which we are planning to do bonding, it has to be properly cleaned. It has to be washed, pumice, uh, uh, washed with the help of the pumice brush, we have to clean it. After that, etching is done. Etching is usually done by taking 30 to 50 percent phosphoric acid for nearly 45 to 60 seconds. Etchant has to be applied on the surface of the teeth. After this, it is again washed away, rinsed. This will give a dull frosty appearance. If frosty appearance is there, then only it indicates that etching has been done. After etching is done, and the area must be totally isolated, there should not be saliva contamination, it should be totally dry. After washing and everything, again it is dry, uh, again isolation is done, the tooth must show a dull frosty appearance after doing etching procedure. After this, then bonding agent is applied on the tooth surface and finally the attachments are fixed by taking required amount of adhesive resin on the base of the bracket and then placing it on the tooth surface. After placing the, it on the tooth surface, it has to be pressed. Excess of material will usually come out from the surface, from the base of the bracket. It has to be removed and finally curing should be done. Now we have learned about what is the banding procedure, what is the bonding procedure. Now let us know in detail about bands. Mostly the bands are available with stainless steel. The material which is used is stainless steel because uh, it is even biocompatible. It has a required amount of strength. The bands are available in various thickness and various sizes. Each and every particular tooth is being given a specific number and bands are preformed bands are also available. Thicker and more wider bands are usually seen for the posteriors. Thinner and narrower are usually preferred for anteriors. Band material have two surfaces. The, uh, the superficial surface means the surface which will uh, which faces outside the oral cavity is usually smooth and the surface of the band material which will be attached or cemented to the tooth surface will be more rough in order to increase the retention. Next is brackets. As I have said that bands are the passive components. To this brackets or the buccal tubes will be attached. What are the brackets? A number of brackets has been evolved since past and they have evolved one after the other. The first was edgewise type of bracket. Edgewise type bracket and present straight wire brackets, both of them have horizontal slot that faces labially. This horizontal slot is actually rectangular in cross section and again accepts rectangular cross section wires to pass through them. Edgewise type of brackets shows precise tooth movement. Uh, um, and tipping type of tooth movement is usually a bit difficult with edgewise type of brackets. Next is ribbon arch brackets. Ribbon arch brackets usually you are uh, usually have slots which is which face vertically. Edgewise type of brackets has brackets uh, bracket slots horizontal. These brackets have bracket slots facing vertical, either incisally or cervically. And they, the slot of these brackets is usually round in cross section and hence they accept round wires. Ribbon arch brackets are most commonly in case of Beck technique, which makes use of differential force technique. Next is weldable and bondable brackets. As I've already said that brackets can be weldable or bondable. If they are bondable, they usually have a metal, uh, they usually have a mesh work at their base. This mesh work will help to uh, for the proper placement of adhesive resin and this adhesive resin will flow in this mesh work and will increase the retention uh, when it is cured. What is weldable brackets then? Weldable brackets are the brackets which will have a metal flange at its base. When they are welding is done, this metal melts and it will it melts and it will flow with the band material and will help this attachment to be fixed to the band material. Next is metallic brackets. Most commonly used brackets are the metallic brackets and they are mostly available in stainless steel. Metallic brackets have a number of advantages. 
like first it is more stronger when compared to other brackets it allows less friction between the wire and the slot and, and between the slot metallic brackets are usually uh, uh, another advantage of metallic brackets they can be sterilized they can be recycled all these are the advantages of metallic brackets but only the disadvantages they usually go east they are aesthetically a bit uh, less when compared to other brackets ceramic brackets so to overcome this disadvantage of uh, aesthetic ceramic bracket scheme. They were aesthetically superior, but they have other disadvantages. Like they are brittle in nature. Usually, uh, gets easily break away. There is there is more friction between the wire and the slot, and there is even color changes. Next one came plastic brackets. Plastic brackets have also been developed with the same intention to have better aesthetics, but it have again same problem that with time discoloration takes place and there is more friction between the wire and the slot. This was all about brackets. Next is buckle tubes. Buckle tubes are also the attachments which are usually welded uh, on the particularly on the bands. These are mostly used in the posteriors. Buckle tubes are available are mostly stainless steel. They have either round cross section or rectangular cross section. Buckle tubes will help in the passage of the wire through them, mostly used in the posterior tree, that is molars. Buckle tubes with single tube, double tube, triple tube. Based upon the requirement, we can select the buckle tubes and we can weld it onto the band material. These are the various types of buckle tubes. One diagram showing weldable type of buckle tubes, other showing bondable type of buckle tubes. Bondable buckle tubes will have mesh on this its base for proper flow of the adhesive resin. Weldable can directly be welded onto the band material. Next is lingual attachments. Buckle tubes are all placed on the buckle aspect, label aspect of the tube. Lingual attachments are placed on the lingual the parietal aspect of the tube. There are a number of cases wherein we require lingual attachments to be placed, like in case of connection of cross points, we need lingual attachment to be placed. These lingual attachments are available in the form of lingual cleats, lingual buttons, they can be directly bonded onto the two surfaces. Here we can see various types of lingual attachments. For the placement of lingual sheet also we require lingual attachments. Here we can see in one diagram, lingual arch is being placed and we can see how it is placed in the lingual, uh, lingual attachments. Next is ligature wire. These are very thin wires of usually 0 0.009 or 0 0.011 mm. Uh, the, the ligature wire usually helps in uh, properly um, engaging the wire into the bracket slot. After engaging the wire into the bracket slot, the ligature wire is tightened so that the wire usually gets properly engaged in between the bracket slot. These are the ligature wire. How uh, in one diagram you can see how the ligature wire is placed after the placement of the arch wire. Baggage wire are used in many other purposes also, in like in case of retraction of the teeth and all. Lock pins. Lock pins are usually made up of brass. Lock pins are most commonly in case, in case of back appliance technique, wherein we usually use ribbon arch brackets. After the placement of the round arch wire in the ribbon arch brackets, the arch wire has to be properly secured. It has to be properly placed in place. It has to be properly positioned. So for the we use lock pins. Lock pins help in proper engagement of the arch wire into the bracket slot. Most commonly used in mega plans technique. Next is arch wires. Arch wire are the active components. These arch wires actually plays a very important role in bringing about the tooth movement. Arch wires are available in various types. First, it was gold alloys which was used in form of arch wires. But because of its cost, it was soon replaced by means of stainless steel. In that stainless steel, austenitic stainless steel was is most commonly preferred. What are the advantages of stainless steel is that excellent formability. It, uh, it, it has even adequate amount of strength resilience. After stainless steel wire, next came nickel titanium wires. Nickel titanium wires, were, uh, the, the name was Nitinol. It was first introduced at the Naval Ordnance Laboratory by Bewiller. It has excellent spring back and shapes, excellent spring back and straight memory property. After this nickel titanium wires came beta titanium. The, the trade name is TMA. Titanium molybdenum alloy. It was introduced by Burstone and Goldberg. This also had excellent shape, memory, and super elastic property, and even it can be uh, made in the form of loops and helices. After this, beta titanium wire came cobalt chromium alloys. The cobalt chromium alloys is available with the trade name of LG alloy. These wires have also good property of shape, memory, good flexibility, and even it, this can also be modified in the form of loops or helices if we want. After this came Optiflex. The Optiflex wire were introduced by Talas. The advantages of Optiflex wire were made up of thin optical fibers. Aesthetically very superior, but the main disadvantage was it cannot be modified in the form of loops or helices. Sharp bends cannot be given. And then the recent advancement came is multi-stranded wire. A number of single wires are being twisted together in the form of coaxial wire and they are used. Excellent flexibility is present with this multi-stranded wire, but the same problem is that sharp bends cannot be given. 
Next is elastics and elastomerics. Elastics and elastomerics are most commonly used in case of fixed appliances. The elastics are actually similar to rubber band material. They are mostly made up of latex and they are available in various forms like elastic threads, e-thread, e-chain, elastic modules, separators, etc. <clears throat> various types of elastics are used in fixed appliance technique. Class 1 elastics are also called as intra-arch elastics. They are mostly used for the retraction purpose, for retraction of the teeth. Class 2 elastics are inter-arch elastics. They are mostly used in class 2 cases wherein it runs from lower molars to upper canines. Class 3 elastics are also inter-arch elastics. They are run from upper molar to lower canine. The last is class 4 elastics are nothing but box elastics used in open bite cases for extrusion of the anteriors. Apart from this, as I have already said, various uses of elastics are there in the form of separators, e-chain, e-thread, etc. Next are springs. Springs are also the active component of fixed appliance. It is, springs are available in various forms. Springs in the form of cantilever springs to bring about various types of tooth movements or springs like open coil spring to open up the space or closed coil spring to close the spaces. Various types of springs are used. Separators. As I have already said and mentioned in banding procedure, that before starting the banding procedure, separation of the teeth is required because band material cannot pass from between the teeth. Hence, the teeth are, are supposed to be first separated from each other. So for this, separators are used. Separators can be available in, in the form of rubber separators or metallic separators. Rubber separators can easily be placed. They should be left in place for 24 hours and as they will try to regain its shape, it will open up the space between the teeth. Metallic separator. Kessling separator is one of the most commonly used type of separator. It consists of a helix and two arms. The shorter arm is passed from below the contact area and the longer arm rests above the contact area. Now, as the two arms start, come, tries to come close to each other, they just open up the space. Most commonly used type of separators. Now after knowing all the fixed appliances, let us know fixed appliance technique. First is ribbon arch appliance. Angle first used this ribbon arch appliance technique wherein he used ribbon arch brackets. Ribbon arch brackets are the brackets which have vertical slot facing incisory, cervical incisory. It has round cross section of the slot and hence except round wire to pass through it. Tipping type of tooth movement uh, could be done with ribbon arch appliance but mesodistal movements were quite difficult with ribbon arch technique. It was soon replaced by another technique, edgewise appliance. Angle's last contribution to orthodontics was the edgewise appliance technique. Edgewise appliance and straight wire both have brackets with horizontal slot facing labially and the cross section of the slot is rectangular that means it accepts a rectangular wire to pass through. Edgewise appliance actually the name edgewise is given because the bracket is not pre-programmed. Everything has to be done on the wire like bends have to be given on the wire and these wire because of bends brings about the tooth movements. It consists of first order, second order and third order bends. First order bends brings about <coughs> uh, labiolingual movements. Second order bends brings about mesodistal movements and third order bends brings about the root movements, any torque in required. So actually movement of the teeth in three planes of space can be achieved, precise tooth movement can be achieved but the only disadvantage is it was very complex technique in which a number of bends have to be given in the wire. Bag appliance. Bag appliance makes use of ribbon arch, uh, bag appliance makes use of ribbon arch brackets and it actually makes use of ribbon arch brackets and differential force technique. Here, tooth movement is achieved by tipping of the tooth movement. Mesodistal movement of the teeth is a bit difficult, but however, back up plans uh, require, uh, also require um, incorporation of various types of helices, loops, and um, fabrication of wire. Uh, so it is also uh, require more uh, technical work. Finally came the straight wire up plans. The straight wire up plans is given by Andrews. Here, the name straight wire is given because everything is pre-programmed in the bracket itself. That means only a plain wire will be inserted and since it is pre-programmed, all the uh, uh, tooth movements will be achieved. Straight wire appliance and edgewise appliance both have brackets with slots horizontal facing labially and rectangular slot is there. Finally, the lingual technique. Lingual technique is the recent advancement in which the attachments are placed on the lingual or the palatal aspect. Aesthetically, it is very superior be uh, because the attachments are placed on the lingual or the palatal aspect. But the only disadvantage with the lingual technique is that it usually causes irritation to the mucosa, uh, tongue ulceration and patients may exhibit problems in speech. It was introduced by uh, Craven Kurus. What are the various stages of the treatment of this fixed appliance? Fixed appliance technique is actually done in three stages. Stage 1, Stage 2, Stage 3. Stage 1 is leveling and alignment stage. 
this is the first stage and it actually begins by insertion of thinner gauges wire like it starts with nickel titanium wires initially less gauge wires will be used and slowly as the leveling alignment gets pro progress of the leveling alignment takes place we usually uh, shift to more stiffer type of wires relief of crowding correction of rotations um, and all uh, these things upright of the teeth all these things are usually completed in the stage 1 itself next comes the stage 2 which is nothing but a space closure stage after the entire leveling and alignment is over the second stage is the stage wherein the closure of the spaces takes place the closure of the spaces can be done in either of the methods it can be friction method or it can be frictionless method friction method or sliding method or frictionless method or loop mechanics and this can even be done either by n mass retraction this means entire adhesives in the form of n mass can be retracted into the extraction space or it can be done by loop uh, or it can be done by first carine retraction then followed by all adhesives retraction and finally the last stage is the finishing and settling stage this is the last stage first stage leveling leveling and alignment second stage space closure and the last stage is nothing but the finishing and settling stage this is usually in o16 uh, mostly done on uh, uh, more flexible type of wires like beta titanium wires and uh, fine tuning of the teeth position is done uh, in during this stage and any settling elastics are required settling elastics are placed this stage actually focuses more on proper intercuspation of the teeth and proper settling of the teeth is achieved or not elastics are given so till the time proper settling occurs elastics are continued and once the settling is done the elastics are removed and the next step will be the debonding step so this was all about fixed orthodontic appliances thank you